My guest today is Michael Brooks. Michael is the CEO and founder at GoLance, an award-winning online freelance marketplace that can be used to recruit and pay uh, global remote top talent from all around the world. And well, welcome to the show, Michael. Hello, and how are you doing? Andy, thank you. It's wonderful to be here. I appreciate you having me a part of the program. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. It is a pleasure to have you here. It's kind of a funny old day, uh, if uh, if I'm honest, uh, Michael, uh, because as we record, uh, well, it's this morning for me. It is uh, it's Tuesday, 14th of June for me. I guess it's the the day before for uh, most of the the rest of the world. But man, Michael, have you looked at the crypto markets today? It's a bloodbath. I mean, this is the wait. What just happened day? Right. I've never seen a day like this where so many huge exchanges have stopped allowing withdrawals and trading. And that, to me, is antithetical to the entire reason why we have crypto. Right. And it just shows that these guys are not safe and people need to be um, either holding in cold, cold storage or choosing their vendors a lot more wisely. Yeah, very much so. So, of course, um, the big news, listeners, is yesterday, but I guess it was about 24 hours ago, uh, Celsius uh, stopped uh, withdrawals uh, for their large, large user base. Obviously, by the time you're listening to this, I'm sure we'll know uh, a lot more details about what went wrong uh, with Celsius, but um, in the meantime, of course, the market has not reacted well. So uh, we've seen everything uh, dump uh, overnight. But of course, Michael, I mean, it's it's not it's easy to blame uh, Celsius uh, and Luna before as kind of a, a trigger, but it is um, much more widespread than that because I was just looking at you know all the other markets, gold stocks. Uh, everything is down at the moment. It's just uh, the global economy is not having a good time, right? I, I guess, you know, but sure. That's like saying it's easy to blame BitConnect, right? <laughs> um, not, not comparing the two. Look, I've been, I've, I've been engaged with Celsius. We looked at integrating it into our platform. Okay. We went through their first round of compliance. We got approved. Um, and we said, hey, we need to see certain requirements on off ramp to fiat was immediate one of them, right? That put them in a different regulatory statute, which means, and they were working towards that. And I believe that Celsius was a good, is a good company. I'm, I'm, I have my concerns now, right? I have really grave concerns now. And I know those guys, um, they, uh, but they raised, or they promoted that they raised seven and a half, $750 million. And then they kept raising. And after that, I got an email. They're like, hey, we want to talk to you about our capital raise. We're extending it. And I'm like, what are you extending it for? You're in the business of paying money on assets that you hold. How are you getting that money? Right? I mean, I don't want to throw out the word Ponzi, but I mean, that's obviously the concern. And again, I like everybody I've talked to and worked with Celsius. We never completed with them. They had a change in regulation um, a short time after, after a short time between the time we, we, we got our compliance done. And they said, hey, we have to do uh, uh, an extended level of compliance for institutions. We were actually excited about it because our plan was to offer their their rates to our community, right? And do a share and, and help our community and, and really leverage it. And they made it a lot harder for individuals to, to, to participate. But that made me look at them even closer. And I'm going, okay, we have to be closer. And it means that if we're gonna do this, we have to increase our disclosures. And had we completed and had we rolled it out and if I pushed it, which in the past I've made decisions that way, uh, we'd be in a lot of trouble our base would be looking at us going, hey, we trusted you. And I'd be like, well, here's the terms of Celsius. And we had this partnership with them. But at the end of the day, it wouldn't matter. You know, it, it comes down to your reputation. It comes down to trust, which I think uh, Celsius has lost forever. So if they did, in fact, raise $750 million plus uh, to build their brand and to build their business, um, 
were they just using that to pay interest, right? Because if their model was secure, dips in the market would be irrelevant. How does a dip in the market affect interest rates they pay out on USDT? I'm not a mathematician, but it doesn't, doesn't matter if it goes up or it goes down, that's interest they're paying on money. That's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's spooky. And I'll tell you one more thing, Andy. I was, at the, uh, I was at that Bitcoin conference in Miami. And the one meeting I wanted to have more than anything else was with my rep at Celsius. And he wasn't there, but he said, here's some nine. Again, nice people. I could be wrong, right? But I went there and it was the pulsating heart of the show. There was lines of people waiting to talk to this booth. It seemed like they had 10 to 15% of the entire show around their booth at all times. Everybody wanted a piece of Celsius. And that made me go, you know, what's that old adage? If it's too good to be true, it probably is. And I got to tell you, man, I had some grave, grave concerns. And I've talked to buddies. They're like, they can't, they can't withdraw. I know a guy who's friends with a guy who was out there. I saw him. He was golfing. I don't golf. Terrible golfer. But I have friends that do. And I don't judge them for their decision to spoil a great walk. As Winston Churchill said, Guy, I was like, I was asking about Celsius. Like, I was like, yeah, you know, we're doing it. What do you think? He pulls out his phone, big crypto guy, shows $300 million in his Celsius account. And he was earning something like 11% interest on Tether. And I'm going, how? How is that not Bernie Madoff? How is this possible? And then today happened or yesterday happened. And it's like, oh, or two days ago for you, I imagine, since you're uh, in the future. And I'm going, oh. That's how a bad day in the market and they have to shut everybody out. And uh, I don't think their brand will ever recover and they'll never earn that trust back. All the trust they had evaporated. Yeah, I, I think um, you're exactly right, uh, Michael. I <laughs> very much agree that uh, the trust, unfortunately, is gone. And once it's gone, uh, it's very difficult to to get back. And um, you're right. I mean, I, it reminds me, Michael, of, you know, the way I always think about it. And, you know, I've had um, Alex Mashinsky. He's been on the show with me twice, actually. Um, and I've, oh, he's a fantastic guest. He's a great talker. He's an excellent storyteller. Uh, he's got the gift of the gab and he has done um you know some you know what he, he uh, was basically one of the i guess the, the inventors of the uh, what do you call it voip the, the voice over internet protocol from the 90s so he's kind of done well and he has this history of being a tech entrepreneur but man it's easy to get into trouble i guess when you set up these and i won't use the word that you used either ponzi but there you go and i think and i'm not <laughs> not accusing them of that i'm no. not accusing them of that, but Right now, if it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck, and that's the word that's getting thrown around and people are going, why can't I withdraw? Yeah. Because, because there's volatility in crypto. There's always volatility in crypto, right? If you can't handle the swings, you can't hold the money. Yeah, and I think, you know, even it's it's kind of hard to see it at the moment since we're kind of uh, we're all doom and gloom at the moment and sentiment isn't great but i think you know over a long enough time period you know bitcoin's annual return is something like um you know 200 percent if you uh, kind of annualize it out uh, over a long enough time frame so if that is the case it just doesn't make sense um you know to hold an asset like that and then risk it for kind of this this five percent of extra centralized yield that exposes you to this uh, incredible risk and and that's kind of what we've seen over the last 24 hours right yeah well i think they were and that's cool that you had alex on the show um, I mean, I've been interested in the company, built something interesting. I hope it's legit, but, and I agree with you, when in doubt, scroll out, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, like if you look five years ago, Bitcoin's 10 X from five years ago, come on, <laughs> right? If you go up a hundred percent in in five years, you're, you're, you're doing great. If you, if you 10 X, it's still a great performing asset, but I understand. I mean, it's very attractive to hold cap, to hold a coin. And especially if you're a holder. Right. You go, look, I believe there's a, there's a, there's, there was one sentiment from that show in Miami and above all else, it was hope. They're like, Bitcoin gives me hope. Crypto gives me hope, hope that will regain independence. 
transactional independence, financial independence, and not from the store place for where you can buy anything you want, but to where you have some control over your own finances and it can't just be grabbed, right? And that was the hope that, that and, you know, right or wrong, who has that ability in government? I'm not getting into that, but that's what people thought. And this has removed a lot of that hope. <laughs> And, and they want instability. People want, have an appetite to investment stability. And I'm not calling Celsius BitConnect, but I remember that rage also. And when did they drop, right? When did the shoe drop? I know a lot of people made a lot of money on BitConnect and then said, you know what? Party's over, I'm done. And yeah. the, the bottom dropped out. And it, and it, when, when the market goes to hell, and you've got to be able to expect that. I mean, dude, okay. Sure, there was the goofiness with uh, with AMC and and uh, all, all the all the little buyers, the the stock market Robin Hood, like they shut down trading because there was a goofy people were trying to short a stock, and I don't agree with that either. But when does Charles Schwab stop you from selling Google stock because it was a bad day, right? <laughs> when when does that happen? It doesn't because it's because if you're credible, you don't do that. Um, and that's what's going to come out of this, Andy. People are going to look at, at places like Bitstamp, which they have their own earning. They have Bitstamp earns. It's a considerable amount less, much, much less than Celsius, much, much less attractive. And I asked myself when I saw that, I was like, what has Celsius figured out that Bitstamp doesn't? And then I start looking at regulatory jurisdiction and whatnot, and I look at stability and people are gonna rush back to what's stable. So I do still think there's hope. I do believe people should get their own, no cold storage. If you don't understand cold storage, don't invest in, don't invest in digital assets. If you do, great. Trade, use exchanges, but understand you have to have an element of diversity. And if you're looking for that freedom, you've gotta understand the concept of cold, the, the process of cold storage. Yeah, um, uh, wise words there, Michael. Uh, definitely cold storage, and of course, you know, not your keys, uh, not your coins. It's a, it's a cliche to say it, but it gets proven right uh, time and time again. Uh, love that you kind of uh, referenced um, the idea that that Bitcoin is hope, Michael. I mean, uh, again, hard hard to, to to see it at the moment with when the sentiment is so dire. But I I think you know Bitcoin uh, does still represent hope nothing nothing has changed about bitcoin apart from uh the the price which as we know does tend to fluctuate uh it can go up a lot it can go down a lot but the the promise and potential of bitcoin is a, a kind of um, decentralized censorship resistant store of value space energy and time uh, over multi-decade time horizons all that uh, still holds true but it's 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 tough to see that I saw today Michael that uh, Michael Saylor MicroStrategy Elon Musk uh, Tesla and uh, Jack Dorsey at um, Square you know those three companies that famously have um, the three kind of largest Bitcoin holdings are now all underwater from between something like 17 to 30 percent on on their bitcoin buys so tough for everyone right now yeah well my heart goes out to elon musk and jack dorsey you know <laughs> <laughs> excuse me but i don't think those guys are going to be missing any meals you know it's a tough day but look it, they they didn't get in and jump and buy to to turn around and flip and i think they really probably have some long-term vision um, I will say this. I don't do a lot of price predictions. I've been right the few times I've actually jumped in and traded. I, I am not a Bitcoin trader, holder, all that investor. I build systems and I theorize. I'm much less exciting. Written several um, top articles on ha Hacker Noon and Coin Monks about the history of cryptocurrency uh, dating back to Andrew Jackson. Right, like, and I love that historical perspective and building systems. Um, I'm much more on the service provider side, but I will say the, the run up to uh, the mining the last Bitcoin, that is going to be a tear. And I don't know where it's at last night. Last time I checked, there was like, what, uh, 2 million Bitcoin left, right? I think this dip is, it may not have hit bottom, but it's not going, it's, 
you're you're at a safe place buying now. You're at a safe place getting in now because the run up when when that goes to the last million Bitcoin to the last hundred Bitcoin to you know to the last ten, that's going to shoot up because even though it doesn't matter, you'll still be able to buy and sell Bitcoin the existing of it in the mind of the community, in the mind of the uh, of the FOMO mind, people are going to go, I'm missing out on an original Bitcoin, right? On an original Bitcoin buy. And that's when people are going to get in. They're going to be like, wait, Bitcoin's running out. There's not going to be any more. I need to get it before it goes away. Um, that level, that is going to be the, the time to look at, to, the, the thing to watch is when the last Bitcoin, the countdown to when the last Bitcoin is going to be mined. And that's going to drive the price through the roof. Whether it'll stay there and how high it'll go, I don't know. Um, I don't want to predict in those numbers, but I will say I would predict that it will it will reach a height we have yet to have seen, and I would not be surprised at that because the imagine the attention, imagine the headlines, and there's so much noise around it. Big, it's almost done. We're almost they've almost issued the last Bitcoin. Just buy, spend a hundred bucks. That way you're part of it. If, you know this this is going to drive volume. Right now is going to be tough. Um, but the, the hope, the hopers and the holders, they're, they're in for the long haul anyways, as I'm sure is Elon and Dorsey. Yeah. Well, sh shout out to, uh, shout out to the, the holders and <laughs> those with, the uh, yeah, long-term, uh, time, uh, horizon and really the, uh, the dollar cost average people, I guess, you know, those, uh, and those people that will just continue to stack, uh, their Bitcoin every week, no matter, uh, of what the price does, uh, those people will do well um, in the uh, period ahead, shall we say, as they uh, <laughs> add add to their stack. Um, Michael, you mentioned that you're a, a systems guy. You mentioned that you're a, 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 a writer. You've got a, a big crypto article on, on Hacker Noon. So I don't think um, I actually gave you an opportunity at the beginning of the show to properly uh, introduce yourself and share some of your background. So we've kind of done the show in reverse today, which I think is kind of worked out well simply because this, it's a kind of news heavy day with with the market uh, doing what it does but for uh, let's let's switch gears and just learn a little bit about your personal backstory and then we'll touch on uh, your authorship and and love to just learn a little bit about Golance as well so yeah what's what's your story Michael uh sure sure thanks thanks for that and uh you're right uh, we just jumped right into it because there's so much <laughs> Um, so uh, background, uh, I've written three books. Uh, first one was on uh, the electronic payments industry, which I've, I've been in in some fashion for, for years and years and years, decades. Um, and the second was on digital, digital money, digital currency. It's called Cash Disruption, Digital Currencies, Annihilation of Paper Money. I think I started that, started writing that with my co-author, Panakin Bisse, he's a, a guy I used to build software with um, and a friend uh, when Bitcoin was like $25. And then we kind of stayed on top and we would watch and we would go back and forth. And we, um, we were polar opposites politically. I won't say which one's which, but uh, we, we, would, we argued our way through that book and then we, we, we built something we were happy with. Uh, it's a little dated now, but much of it came true. Um, last book is about remote work. Uh, my, my company is called GoLance. It's a freelance marketplace. Uh, it helps hire people. It's like, it's like some of the other freelance marketplace people work with. People post jobs and hire around the world. And we, uh, we try to help uh, quality freelancers get quality jobs with quality clients, um, online jobs. So uh, only, only online. And we started noticing... Um, an uptick, we, we, were, we integrated a platform that allowed us to pay out in crypto, worked out great. And we just started go, seeing it go up and up and up and up each year. And I think last year was, or we're on track this year to, to be at around uh, 12 to 13% in digital asset payouts. And that's just between Bitcoin and ETH and people want more. The appetite is for more, uh, which is weird because when we see big dips, that's when people take more of their payouts and we let them decide. Some people go, hey, I want 10% in crypto, I want 50. A lot of people take their whole their whole paycheck out in it, their whole payment. Uh, 
So it's it's exciting. Uh, we're doing a we're doing a, a case study with Bitstamp. I like working with Bitstamp because they are. And it sounds weird because it's counterintuitive to being an entrepreneur. They are compliance heavy, right? I know that I can go to bed at night and everything that goes in and out of that has gone through the appropriate process and nothing's been missed. And they, they run a very tight ship and I don't have to worry about it. Um, and we're also seeing more clients pay in with digital assets. And we're soon going to be lo- launching uh, launching a contracting to where clients and freelancers can contract through digital assets. So they can say, hey, I've got this contract. It's in, uh, it pays milestones in USDT, right? Or it pays milestones in ETH. And we're designing that and we think that's going to be very exciting for the digital asset community. Do write a lot of articles on Coin Monks. Got a big one on on Hacker Noon recently. Hacker Noon, for those that don't read it or, or know of it, it's a fantastic publication. Um, they give us a lot of creativity, a lot of room to be creative, but they they have a they have a strong appetite for evergreen content, uh, and that's what we focus on. We focus on looking at, uh, or I personally I focus on as as a and I guess I'll call that a crypto enthusiast, but uh, I look at it. I look at the historical spec perspective of what crypto is and where it may have have roots. Um, my favorite one was when I likened uh, the seventh president, Andrew Jackson, to being the father of cryptocurrency because he ultimately. And this one's really kind of fascinating. So he he breaks up the bank. He breaks up the uh the second bank in the united states redistributes the funds to state banks and goes if you want to be independent state you got to have your own currency we're not going to we decentralized he decentralized money in the united states and threw it all back to the states um and it wasn't until the thick of the fog of the civil war in the united states in 1863 that a guy named Solomon P. Chase, uh, a senator and and also a former senator from, where was he, Ohio? Um, And a former, or that might've been John Sherman who was a senator from Ohio. The uh, Solomon Chase was also earlier uh, treasurer, secretary treasury, whatever it was. Um, But do you recognize the last name? He basically writes, authoring this bill, he writes the bill about how decentralization is corrupt and we need to centralize money. And he makes an argument for it and votes on it and gets it pushed through, signed in by Lincoln in a time period, which is the only time they could have gotten it done, right? During the Civil War, where people were just like, okay, you know, they just rubber stamped whatever they need to to, to defeat the South. Um, but that the guy who authored the bill is the namesake of the largest bank in the world, um, Chase Bank, or at least the largest bank in the United States. I don't know if it's the largest one in the world. It's definitely up there. But uh, I, I found that extraordinary. And if you looked up the language on the Senate's, on the US Senate's website, it's basically the opposite case for, it's like making the case for cryptocurrency, but like in reverse. It's like them going, oh, you don't want it easy. You want it centralized. Then it's safe and it'll protect against shady characters and inflation. And we're just like, what? But uh, the what, what digital assets have the ability to do now is bring back, and that's my latest article, was about how states can create their own digital assets. How uh, Texas is uniquely positioned to create a digital asset. And... Um, by by and, and how they would back it and how they would create it and maintain it and how that would send power back to the states and make a more secure environments for states and allow them to compete uh in america we're we're all about uh interstate competition that's that's our uh, but these are all think pieces andy there's nothing here uh, there's no there's no grand plan that anybody's going to pick up this is just Purely academic thought and writing, and it's just stuff I enjoy. 
Yeah. It's well, part of the crypto conversation. <laughs> part of the crypto conversation. I love it. And, uh, well, I'll make sure there's a link uh, to uh, some of your work on, on Hack and Noon uh, in the show notes, uh, listeners and, uh, and Michael. But, um, yeah, I'm fascinated by uh, what you're building at, at, at Golance, uh, Michael, and this kind of... Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of these platforms around the world. I suppose um, Upwork is probably one of your competitors and the one that Hello. a lot of people will be familiar with. Can I just t- I'll tell you my 2018 bear market crypto story? Because um, yeah. because I think a lot of people will relate and maybe you can give some advice as to how people should navigate um, this kind of environment. So, uh 2018, I was I had my first kind of job at a um, at a crypto startup, and really got let go. Um, once the market turned, um, a, a, a half the staff and eventually 90% of the staff uh, were let go, and I think uh, that is happening at the moment and and all sorts of tech companies, not even just crypto. So at the time, you know, I was like uh, wanting, uh, kind of starting out as a crypto content producer and I thought, oh, well, that's okay. Um, what can I do? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll register with Upwork and see if I can, um, you know, start writing, doing crypto content uh, remotely for, for clients around the world. But at the time, I guess Upwork was completely clogged uh, with other people trying to do the same thing. And I couldn't even register on Upwork as a crypto content writer because so many other people had uh, had done the same thing. So uh, luckily, I'm a bit more established um, in 2022, four years later. But what should people do, Michael, if, um, if they're getting... Uh, you know, from a kind of the the side of wanting to start out as a remote worker offering uh, their services in, in this kind of industry for, for, for clients using your platform. Yeah, so well, that's that's pretty sad. You know, I, I'm not, uh, they, they, are my, they are my industry counterpart. And, um, you know, from what we believe our price and value, uh, we understand our strengths and weaknesses and theirs as well. We're, we're a much more open platform, um, whereas we've heard stories of how they really attempt to control the relationship and how people control the people communicate within the relationship. We try to encourage work and disencourage disintermediation by just pricing fair. By we we just think that that's that's the easiest way to go about it. Um, keeping our pencil sharp and working with the best people and proving value. Uh, it's very simple to sign up on GoLance. You just go to GoLance, uh, create, a, create a profile. But if anybody, and I say this, um, if, if, if somebody's trying to out there get an online job, earn money, you know, uh, feed their family or, or what, whatever, or even just establish themselves, uh, sign up on all of them, go make a relationship with all of them. Get it, put as much into your profile, into who you are, into what you've created, what you've done. Write a couple articles and submit them to Hacker Noon. You know, go out and put yourself out there, and and that's a, that's a great way to get your you, you you to get quality clients, and then see where they come from. Ultimately, it's my job to go find quality clients and and incentivize them to work on our platform and hire hire good people right it's good people's job and good good freelancers job to be there and to show up and look their best so if if i'm freelancing i'm going to show up and i'm going to look my best on every freelance platform um and that's how i'm going to harvest clients and you know respect the rules of all the freelance platforms even upwork even though i think they're ridiculous and their company's ridiculous and the rules are ridiculous and they're right i i just i i find that their their model is is uh and I mean, some of the stories that I've heard where people who had tons of clients, no problems, no issues, but they put their phone number in there because their client wants to have a call, uh, Upwork will shut them down for that. They want all communications going through digital, which that would never work for me, right? That would never, that would never work for me. We just, we don't do that. I mean, uh, it's tough to be on an honor system in the digital world, but we try to make enough encouragement where um, our price is so palatable and our service is so high and the value of the relationship, it, it means so much. And we think that's a different mindset. Um, and that's, that's where we intend to win the war. But uh, for now, 
uh, I still think Upwork is is a good place to find work. Um, I think we're better, but but not for everybody. Uh, but we're 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 definitely uh, scrappy and um, we're climbing. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, and well, I guess the other the other trend that is on your side, uh, Michael, is you know just a uh, the general kind of trend towards a remote work. Uh, worldwide that was uh, you know just so intensely accelerated uh, by the pandemic um, did you kind of uh, I mean it's 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 weird to say you know did the pandemic put uh, some wind in your sails if you like but certainly there have been uh, you know various different uh, sectors have benefited from the pandemic right yeah um, it did it did uh Sadly, you know, I don't like to profit off of other people's pain. A lot of people were, were hurt during this process, um, but that's, you know, how things work. The markets move, uh, industries change, adapt and overcome. Um, to be honest though, I liked it better before. I'll tell you why. It was an easy sell. I could go talk to someone and explain to a client the value of online remote teams and remote teams were working great prices were a little bit better and it was like hey this is what you can do and it was like a, hey i'm showing you the the value uh now everybody recognizes the value and they're like okay let's go and i'm like but, but it's so great they're like yeah we don't want to hear about it we already know go get us somebody so it's the good the bad um but uh yeah people aren't going back the the decentralized workforce they're not going back to the way they were by no means, it's only gonna get sharper. And our focus is more on culture than anything else. How do you maintain and grow a remote or decentralized workforce culture, right? Like it's culture in a traditional office is, is not the scariest thing in the world. You have the Halloween parties, the Christmas parties, birthday cake, and uh, everybody signs the birthday card. I mean, it's, it's, a, it, it's, it's cookie cutter and it's fun and it can be exciting and you make your environment a good place to work. How do you do that with a decentralized workforce? And we've been tackling that challenge um, day in and day out. And uh, it's something beautiful and something we're very, very proud of. And we're, it's, it's, it really got cult designing culture with distributed teams is our shining light. That's what guides us. All right. Well, that uh, is a nice place, I think, Michael, to go to a very quick break. And then we'll come back and we'll finish off. We'll have some fun. We'll run you through the very famous crypto conversation. Hot take around. All right. All right, indeed. And we are back. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, we've probably been here all along. But I'm with Michael Brooks, the CEO and founder of GoLance. Uh, the online freelance marketplace uh, that we've talked a little bit about today. Uh, but Michael, I'd like to finish each podcast with a very quick round of rapid fire crypto conversation hot takes. Are you up for it? Let's boogie. Let's boogie, yeah. Michael. All right. I like it. No right or wrong way to do this. I'm just going to throw some questions at you. Uh, just give me your, uh, your honest opinions, Michael, hot take style, if you like. Question one is, where would you say that you sit on the Bitcoin a maximalist to multi-chain opportunist spectrum? The, maxilla, the maximalist to the multi-chain optimist. So you mean, do yeah. I think it's all... Yeah. Are you, are, are you exactly all uh, are you kind of all in on bitcoin ignore everything else or are you bitcoin is like old-fashioned boomer technology out of date all in on multi-chain or or somewhere in between well there's three thousand stocks on the in, the in the nasdaq right why can't there be three thousand cryptos um i do think bitcoin is i would say the foundation foundation digital asset believe it or not i'm still a fan of ripple I'm a fan of their company. We, our company was lucky enough to work with Ripple. They hired us as a consultant and we opened up the Philippines and uh, Mexico with them and won the Blockchain, blockchain Visionary Award uh, with Ripple as a company. Um, I know they had a little trouble with, uh, with, with uh, they had a little legal trouble and they're working through it. And I think they're gonna get through it just fine. Um, but that, it's a fundamentally different tool 
right? They're the, what, what Ripple's, the company is designed for, what their ledger is designed for. It's designed to move, uh, whereas Bitcoin is, you know, I trust, I'm sending you money back and forth and it goes up and it goes down and who knows, woozy wazzy, whatever. Uh, Ripple's designed to uh, go from fiat to XRP through the XRP blockchain or XRP ledger out to another exchange and convert from XRP to local currency. And that to me is a very fascinating process. And that way it, it's using a digital asset to facilitate uh, fiat to fiat. Um, so ju just that explanation, no, I don't think Bitcoin stands alone as, as, the, as the only, I do think it's a, a, a beautiful asset and it's something worth holding on to. And I'm telling you on that run up, it's, it's going to climb. That's where I believe it's going to climb um, most. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, speaking of uh, that uh, run-up, I mean, it reminds me of a quote by uh, Bill Gates, Michael, who famously said that uh, we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in two years and underestimate what we can accomplish in 10. So, you know, with that in mind, uh, whatever you like here, uh, Bitcoin, blockchain, remote work, Golance, uh, but what does it all look like in 10 years time? So I would not, I will one, you know, my theory is on the states, right? The, the, what would, what, what, the states having the ability to issue their own digital asset. That to me would identify in a win, right? That would be a state saying, this is a digital asset. It's backed on the real estate value in our state or has some type of metrics that it can tie to. So it, it, it stabilizes the currency. Um, am I answering the question in the right way? I feel like a... yeah. To whatever you like, just you know, okay. ten years time, project away, speculate away, hot tech style, <laughs> quick and snappy. And, <laughs> and ten years time, also, you know, um, there's great companies like Fireblocks and even Celsius bought a company called GK8 out there that uh, are allowing digital assets to to do some amazing things, and allowing uh, I think institutions. And I'll say even individuals, right? You think NFT, right? What if they had Andy coin and what's the value of Andy coin and who can buy it and who's going to get a piece of it? And you look and you see some rising star and they get to decide their own rules. And then ultimately the value of it is based upon trust, right? And so much can be said about trust and digital yeah. assets. So if having, having the ability now to spin out a coin using one of these technology platforms like uh, Fireblocks, which is a lot of ex-Ripplers, a fascinating company out of Tel Aviv, being able to spin up your own coin for your company or for yourself or uh, what have you. Um, and like, I mean, you know, let's say Justin Bieber came out with a coin uh, when he was, uh, and it was a, when, when he was just uh, coming out and he was able to raise money off that coin and somehow attributed a value to that. You're, you're going to see in 10 years time, more of that. Some of that we're going to, or at least very much scratching the surface of someone coming out and going, believe in me, buy this coin. It's going to replace, it could very much replace the GoFundMe. It's a, you're buying a piece of, of my existence. Here's the, uh, here's the max amount I'm going to put in my coin. Any value I create as a superstar above that, be it a superstar business, a superstar, what have you, um, it, it, it's going to allow people to become stock, have their own stock. Very much uh, agree, Michael. Thank you for that. Well, the, I guess the flip side of that, of course, if we rewind it back to the present day, um, reminds me this time of a quote by a sci-fi author, William Gibson, who, of course, said that the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. So with that in mind, Michael, uh, can you think of a, an a example of the future being here right now, but most people just aren't really aware of it? Okay, well, the, the one that, that comes to mind is, is the, the one I just mentioned was Fireblocks, right? The, that, I mean, it's, I, I hate to be redundant, but, <laughs> but to have the ability, like, look, I, I did, when we created Golance um, eight years ago, I sat down and designed our own coin for Golance. I was writing my book 
my second book and going, hey, and it was taking a long time, but I was like, hey, I actually think we can, we can make this coin and then create a value and then issue a coin to our entire community. And, this, and like I wrote this entire white paper and even a management system to create an, an issue coin, uh, very rudimentary. And I sat down with my attorney who's also, um, I would say, one of my very, very closest friends, uh, as close as anybody can be to an attorney, because I don't think lawyers are real people, by and large. Um, they're just, they, they're missing that human bone. But this guy is a wonderful, wonderful person for a lawyer. Little humor, little humor, that's all. Um, so I sat down with him and, and he was like, he, he looked at it, he said, this is brilliant. And it was the, probably the nicest compliment he's ever given me. He said, but dude, go build a business first and then do this. If not, you're gonna be in the business of issuing this coin. Today, had there been companies like GK8 and Fireblocks available, I could pick that up, plug that in and have my own, have my own unit of trust, my own mechanism, design my own mechanism with a uh, little stress and go, well, I don't wanna say little stress, but with a lot more ease than back then. And that future exists. And there's some future little Justin Bieber on YouTube right now, or Rumble, or one of these other platforms, you know, beating away his drum, singing "Baby, Baby, Baby," and that guy or gal or they or whatever they're calling themselves that's going to plug in, uh, is going to plug in a coin and say, "Hey, if you like my music, buy part of my coin. If you like my comedy show, buy part of my coin. Uh, if you like my company, buy my coin." And um, that's where I think Ripple was you know, on the bleeding edge of, and that's why they're dealing with the SEC the way they are now. And I would love to see less regs around that and more freedom, but that's just me. Uh, in the meantime, um, the ability, the ability for some non-technical person that has some business or some talent that they want to, to, to sell the hope on, to help them get to where they want to be, that's that's what's here now that people are not seeing. Absolutely. All right. Nicely said again, Michael. Time to start to close this out. Uh, the final question is: What is your favorite science fiction uh, book, film, or TV show? Uh, the Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Oh. Far and away. There you go. That's a, a, a nice choice. I'm not sure if we've had that before. Thank you for that. All right. Well, uh, I've enjoyed talking to you today, uh, Michael. We've kind of kicked over, um, uh, yeah, the uh, <laughs> the murmurings, the market murmurings uh, of, of the day. And uh, we've learned a little bit about Golance and what you've been up to. Um, nothing else to say really except hand the metaphorical microphone back to your good self. Please tell the people where they can go to find you on uh, Twitter or wherever else you like to hang out online and what they should do if they want to uh, perhaps sign up uh, with Golance either as, you know, to, to find uh, some remote talent or to offer themselves up uh, as remote talent. Sure. Um, so, uh, look, if you're looking for if you're looking for a freelancer or you are a freelancer, please come to GoLance, um, GoLance.com, G-O-L-A-N-C-E.com. Sign up. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to work with you. I'm on the Twitter at uh, Michael Brooks, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-B-R-O-O-K-S-P-R. P-R as in Puerto Rico because I live in Puerto Rico with a whole bunch of other crypto people. Some the probably the most famous some of the most famous crypto people um and then uh, i highly recommend checking us out michael dash brooks uh at michael dash brooks on hacker noon to see our articles or linkedin or what have you but it's all over the place it's in that it's in that whole world but um yeah come find us come talk to us i'd love to love to get to know you awesome uh thank you very much michael all the best and bye for now thank you Andy. All right, there you go. That was Michael from Golance. Uh, enjoyed talking to Michael. And um, yeah, well, really is, um, yeah, it's a funny old time. Um, 
good to see some some actual uh is, what do we do we call this capitulation is this capitulation in the market i mean it is actually starting to feel like that um just for the for the first time <laughs> during the spear market uh really starting to see some proper uh doom and gloom and fear uh so it doesn't mean we've really hit the bottom yet but it could have it could have we don't know yet be too soon to say but um yeah how are you dealing uh, with the market, folks? Holding strong? Have you sold already? Are you thinking about selling? Are you buying? I don't know. Uh, crazy old times, crazy old days. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll do some shows to uh, start to track uh, the sentiment. Maybe get some of those, uh, get some some technical analysts on to give us their thoughts and uh, and the shows and the days, weeks and months ahead. All right, that is today's show. Thanks for listening, team. This was the Crypto Conversation for Brave and Ukraine.